Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation with complex numbers. Tangent x equals square root of 3 times i divided by 2, and we're going to be solving for x values. Great, so we do know that, hopefully, tangent x can take pretty much any values between negative infinity and positive infinity, but what happens if it takes a non-real value? Does x exist? And is x going to be a complex number or can it be a real number? Okay, let's get into this. To be able to write an expression for tangent x, this is also related to hyperbolic functions, by the way. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and write the sine and cosine using complex numbers. But for that, I do need Euler's formula, which is e to the power ix equals cosine x plus i times sine x. Now, in this expression, if you replace x with negative x, you get e to the power negative ix. And since cosine is an even number, I mean even function, not an even number, it's an even function, cosine of negative x is going to be the same as cosine of x. But sine is odd, so sine of negative x is going to be negative sine of x. Make sense? So that's why we're going to get a negative sign here. So let's go ahead and put these two together and find expressions for sine and cosine, which we're going to use to write something for tangent. Okay? If you add these equations up and divide by 2, you get the following. And I think we used this idea before. I'll try to share the links down below here and as well as here. Cosine x can be written as e to the ix plus e to the negative ix divided by 2. And if you go ahead and subtract these equations, the first minus the second. This is first, this is second, by the way. And then you're going to get the i sine x twice. So you have to divide by 2i. So And that's going to give you sine x equals e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by 2i. So these are two important formulas that gives us sine and cosine. And when we have trigonometric equations that have a value that's outside the negative 1 to 1 range, because as you know, cosine and sine is always between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. But if they're outside, that means the solutions are going to be non-real. And that's what we've been using. So now let's go ahead and divide these equations like this, sine and divide by cosine. As you know, tangent is equal to sine x divided by cosine x. Now let's go ahead and write the sine x first. And then we're going to flip the second one and multiply. That's going to be 2 over e to the ix plus e to the power negative ix. Let's simplify this a little bit, just a little bit. The 2's are going to cancel out. And obviously you have an i at the bottom, which I'm going to get rid of in a little bit. Let's go ahead and write this as e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by i times e to the ix plus e to the negative ix. Let's go ahead and get rid of the i at the bottom by multiplying both the top and the bottom by negative i. You don't have to do this. You can also do it later, but I like to do it and take care of it right now. Multiply by negative i. Multiply this by negative i. Negative i times i is negative i squared, and that is going to be 1. So we can totally forget about this and distribute to negative i. But distributing the negative i basically means that you're going to negate what's inside. So let's go ahead and write it as i times e to the negative ix, because that's going to switch the difference, right? The opposite of a minus b is b minus a. And then the top uh, is going to be like that, and the bottom is going to stay the same, which is the sum. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and set it equal to our value, which is root 3 i over 2. And doesn't this remind you something like, okay, cosine of... 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, but that's different. Anyways, this is tangent. So we're going to set this equal to root 3i over 2. What happens? i cancels out. i is not 0, so we can go ahead and divide both sides by i, whatever that means, cross it out, and then we have the following equation. So we get this 2e to the negative ix minus 2e to the ix equals square root of 3e to the ix plus square root of 3 times e to the power negative x. Let's go ahead and combine like terms, and then that's going to give us the following. Let's go ahead and put the uh, positive exponents on the same side, like this, 2 plus root 3 e to the i x on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, and I switch sides. You are going to get 2 minus root 3. I hope hopefully this is not too confusing. I just manipulated algebraically and separated those. So at this point, you can do a couple different things, but the, I, in my opinion, the best um, uh, approach for this is substitution. So let's go ahead and call this t, and this is going to become 1 over t, right? Okay. 
And then from here, we're going to get something like this. 2 plus root 3t equals 2 minus root 3 over t. And then we can go ahead and multiply or cross multiply. That's going to give us 2 plus root 3 times t squared equals 2 minus root 3. And from here, if you isolate t squared, you're going to get a fraction with irrational. So let's go ahead and rationalize the denominator. When you rationalize the denominator, you're going to notice something nice. Let's multiply by 2 minus root 3 and 2 minus root 3. The top is going to be 2 minus root 3 squared. Leave it at that. Don't expand it. And the bottom is just going to be uh, from difference of two squares, it's just going to be one. So we have t squared equals some constant squared. We can square root both sides, and this is going to give us two solutions. t equals 2 minus root 3, and t equals the opposite of this number, which is root 3 minus 2, or you can write it as negative 2 plus root 3 if you want. Make sense? t sub 1 and t sub 2. Okay, let's just go ahead and uh, go with the first solution of t, and then find the x value from there. What is t, though, right? t is e to the power ix. So keep a good record of uh, whatever you use for substitution, so you can always back substitute. So t is equal to e to the power ix, so it's equal to 2 minus root 3. I'm also going to show you the result from or from alpha, so you can kind of compare and contrast. Anyways, so what am I going to do with this? I want to write the right-hand side as a complex number in polar form, so let's go ahead and multiply this by 1, but I'm going to write the 1 as e to the power i times 2 and pi. Because if you think about it, multiples of 2 pi are going to give you uh, this number, and that's actually 1 if it's, uh, what is it called? The modulus is 1. But in this case, the modulus is this number, which is the absolute value. And that's a positive quantity, so that's important. Pay attention to that. Okay. What am I going to do next? L and both sides. Okay, let's go ahead and natural log both sides. So that's going to give us natural log of this. And then I have a product, so if you natural log a product, it should turn into the sum of two natural logs. And you got to remember, if you ln something with e to the power something, then it's just, it's just going to be that power because ln e is 1. Bring this down, bring this down to the front, and you're going to end up with this. ix equals ln 2 minus root 3 plus i times 2n pi. Awesome. What do we do next? Well, you could divide by i, a lot of people will do, but I'll do something different. I'll multiply both sides by negative i. Why? Because negative i times i is negative i squared, which is going to give me 1. So something that I like doing, I, because I don't want to deal with fractions, fractions are scary. This is negative i squared, which is 1, so that gives me x automatically. And here, i got to be careful. Uh, I'm going to do this first because, again, I'm getting negative i squared, which is 1. So I can kind of start with 2 and pi. That's going to be my real part. And then when I distribute this over that, minus ln 2 minus root 3i. And that's going to be my imaginary part. We can do a little bit of something here. For example, write this as ln 2 plus root 3 to the power negative 1. Uh, oops, I wrote negative i. Too complicated, too complex. Negative 1. And then what we can do here is we can actually bring this negative 1 to the front, making that a positive. So you can also write this as x equals 2n pi plus ln 2 plus root 3i. If you just want to make it positive, I like to do that positive. Okay? So that's going to be my solution. And I'm also going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. So notice that we have a 2n pi being added as the real part and the other part is imaginary. And Wolfram Alpha gives me the following solution. And... Uh-oh, when I look at it, I notice that this part is actually not good because that basically gives me what? That gives me n pi, why not 2 n pi? Something to think about. Okay, I'm going to leave it to you as an exercise. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.